What's up guys, James from Siki Manufacturing. We're back at it on our FRS project here. Build's going smooth. We got a big headache out of the way on last episode, but we're gonna continue on the same format, just prepping this chassis before we get to actually installing the engine and transmission. So got a few more things to knock out on this. Uh, we're gonna dive into that right now, so let's check it out. All right, so next item on the list for prep or installation is gonna be this clutch master cylinder that we make. So it's a low profile unit allows you to run a bigger bore master, but sinks it back into the firewall. So works great for LS swaps, any swap, honestly, in this car. And even if you have just a factory transmission FRS, we make one for that as well, where if you have an upgraded clutch or, you know, something heavy duty, like your supercharger, boosted, whatever's going on, you need to flow a little more fluid. The bigger master cylinder helps, you know, the pedal travel. Um, everything just works a little bit better. So you can, upgrade this and we're gonna go through that, but it's so much easier to do it while the engine's out. You can definitely do it with the engine in there, but it's gonna save you a lot of time to do it now. So I'd recommend uh, getting that knocked out. So let's dive in on that project. All right, so first step to getting the factory clutch master out of this car and out of our way, is we gotta come in here, pull the plastic panel underneath the steering wheel here, just to make it a little bit easier to get up into that pedal where the linkage is. And you have a clevis on the end of that clutch master cylinder rod, so we're gonna Pull the clip, push the pin out, and then that'll free it up from the inside, everything we gotta do, and then we'll move to the outside after that. So let's get started. I have to take this cover off if you don't want to, but uh, we're gonna get this out of the way. Just the easier to show you guys what we're doing up under the dash here. But this panel just pops off, a couple screws. All right, so that's the cotter pin we gotta get out. It's right above the gas pedal. It's got some uh, little safety mechanism on it. Looks like we gotta pinch that with some needle nose first. All right, once you get that pin out, then this clevis here is free. Now we can go to the outside in the engine compartment and unbolt the two bolts in the lines. All right, so we're gonna get this AC line out of the way too. So just kind of make it a little tighter in here. And since this car will be getting the Siki AC line kit, we're not gonna need this factory line anymore anyway. So might as well just get it out of the way. So now you're gonna remove the factory clutch master cylinder hydraulic line. This is when we go down to the slave cylinder. I'm not gonna be reusing any of this as well, so we're gonna get it out of the way. Now we're gonna take the two 12s off that are holding the master cylinder to the firewall. And then I'll also Remove this line bracket. So there's the line and the stock clutch master. All right, so now that you got the stock master cylinder removed from the car, I wanna show you real quick the differences with this setup and something to consider with the installation. So if you notice, this is basically the plane for the firewall right here. And then you have the new one. So you can see how much further sunk back it is on the Siki master cylinder. So this gives you a ton more clearance back here, be it you know for an LS swap or 1J2J or anything else you might be doing in the car. Um, but either way, the whole point of this is to sink this back in the firewall, give you more clearance, but also allow for this larger bore master cylinder, which is gonna work a lot better 
on that slave cylinder for the heavy duty pressure plates and flow the fluid we need with the same pedal stroke. So um, either way, this sinks back in. So the first thing we got to do obviously is currently there's a hole this diameter in the firewall and that's it. But we need to make the hole this size and square shaped or rectangle I should say. Um, so the next step we have to take the template. So if you go to Siki's website and you're on the actual item on the website, you can see in the there's an extra documents section on there where you can download a PDF or a template of the PDF where you can cut this template out. I'm going to show you how to cut that template out next and get it ready to actually trace out the lines on the firewall. Now this is the way the template comes when you get your master cylinder kit. So depending on what you've got, razor blade or uh, scissors or whatever work to cut this out. Just to note, this line in here represents the minimum you can cut away on the sheet metal. So it isn't really crucial that you get this line perfect if you uh, don't have a steady hand. But the main thing is you just don't want to go past this outer line because this outer line is what basically would cover the hole. So you just don't want to open it up. But I would recommend, you know, scribing right on this line then when you make your mark you make sure you're cutting on the outside of it. So I'm going to start and get these straights all lined up here. And then last you got these two holes. So if you want, you don't really have to fully cut this hole out. You can just make like a cross or an X and it'll allow you to see the complete hole. But So this is basically what it's going to look like when you're done. So we're going to scribe or use a Sharpie to mark this inner diameter that we cut away and just knowing that we want to make sure that line is completely trimmed off and non-existent anymore because if, if you don't do that it's going to be real tight on the sheet metal and it's going to rub on the way in. So you can, there's a little room for error around the outside here. Just keep that in mind. To make it a little easier to get the template in and out of the car you don't need all this excess on the sheet here but this outer line isn't necessarily important so you don't have to be real careful with where you're cutting on this one. Make sure you got enough room. So there's your template we're going to actually use. All right, so we're going to get ourselves a little bit of room here. Factory harness is held on this stud, so you can undo that, undo this clip, and get it out of the way. I like to just push it down here. Gives us the extra room. So the factory harness is normally has a little tab coming off here that clips on. Um, to this stud right here which is in the way so we're gonna cut that off and get it out of the way right now. We're gonna get this smoothed off the firewall here. So now we're going to use our template and once you get this smooth we're going to come back once we make our cuts here and hit this with a little little paint just to keep anything from rusting. You just want to cover up the bare metal but you can take your template, it's really basic, slide it down over the stud and you can see like the cut line is going to go right through the edge of where the piece we just cut off. So we're going to get a sharpie then and just mark it out I mean, you can use whatever you want to do that, a paint marker. You can scribe it, um, whatever method you want to use. Main thing is just, again, this isn't super critical. So if it's a little bit, your line's a little bit off, it's not going to matter. Just try to hold it 
somewhat still in the same position. There you go. So again, the outside of this line matters. The inside doesn't matter at all because all this is going to be gone. So you just want to make sure when we cut, we remove all the marks since the edge of that is where the paper template was. And worst case, if you cut all this out and it's a little tight somewhere, you can just cut in there and clean it up if you don't cut a very straight line. All right, so next step, we got to cut this thing out. <clears throat> Anyone that's ever cut sheet metal knows that, you know, cutting that radius um, can be difficult. So what I like to do is use a three quarter inch hole saw. It's very similar to the radius for this outside edge here. Um, and then I come in here and I basically will cut each corner out. And this hole saw we use actually is like a great size for cutting O2 sensor holes out in a uh, exhaust, but it's a really thick blade. So leaves you plenty of room to get a sawzall blade in afterwards and kind of connect your dots. But so we're going to eye this up. So when the pilot drill goes through, the radius ends up right on our, our line. And then what we're left with is four holes in here. And then we just have to cut out the little pieces that are left holding it on. So it makes it pretty quick and easy then versus trying to cut that radius with a saw blade. I mean, A, you'd have to have a really tiny saw blade. I know they have like a little pneumatic saw you can use, but um, the other option is just a cutoff wheel. You know, you can do the same thing and then just come in here with a cutoff wheel. So, uh, and nick each one of them off, but many ways to do it. But either way, we got to get that sheet metal cut out. one down.
All right, four holes cut. Now to connect the dots. Now you can do this before or at this stage like I am right now, but um, you can see there's all this foam on the inside. <clears throat> it's not really going to get in your way, but it can kind of like gum up your blade and it's mostly up on the top side here. So I'm going to go inside with a razor blade and just cut out a little bit of a window around this. I'm um, not going to film it because it's impossible to get a camera and light up in there, but you get the point. We're going to get this foam out of the way and then we can come in here and cut the rest out with a blade. All right, so I'm going to opt for the cutoff wheel method. I just feel like I can maintain a little more control and placement of my line. Just remember you got some important stuff around here like the harness and this brake line so just be careful what you're doing take your time but we got both sides freed up so now we just got to get this top and bottom cleaned up here this will break off but we'll be left with a little point bottom. Brake line getting a little close for my comfort there so bent that out of the way temporarily. Now I just clean up some of these edges. So just knocking the sharp edge off with a little sanding drum. Making sure I didn't miss anything. All right, so now we got that all cleaned up. We're gonna check fit real quick here. Looks perfect. So it's designed to be right underneath this weld on the firewall, which just sits right over the factory studs. You should have a little bit of wiggle room the way the template's designed. It shouldn't be like forcing it one way on the stud or the other. It should be able to kind of float around and the studs are in the middle of these machined holes, but there's a little bit of wiggle room. So it should be rocking like that. It's not the end of the world if it's tight, but you just don't want to be forcing it one way or the other. Um, but looks good. So we're going to pull this back off clean the fire up, get a little bit of paint on some of these exposed metal areas and uh, move on to mounting this thing for good. All right, so now that we got that all cut out, checked it fits right, we need to adjust the clevis location to match on these two. You can see currently it's just right outside. So you want this hole on this clevis to be in the same spot. Easiest thing I've found is you could take these both, set them on the edge of a table. So the table's sitting here and they're hanging off. That way it kind of locks them in the same spot. You could take a simple measurement with a tape measure in the, the day you're just trying to get it about the same so we got a small adjustment to make here it's pretty close out of the box but either way we're going to, have to tweak it a little bit 
And that adjustment's just made now to get it in the ballpark. You're still gonna wanna make your pedal free play adjustment, but we'll touch on that at the end. All right, two quick things to go over before we permanently bolt this to the firewall. That's gonna save you a little bit of headache, so let's knock it out now. You're gonna wanna do a bench bleed on this master cylinder. I'm not gonna get into that process. There's plenty of videos online about it. Even Willwood has one on their particular master cylinder. So do a bench bleed, that'll save you some headaches. The other thing is check your pin fitting. So this factory pin from your clutch pedal is gonna go through this clevis here. It's a pretty tight fit, it's gonna be snug. So what I would recommend, um, make sure it goes in and out easy enough, but you're not, you don't want it loose. If you do need to open it up just a tiny bit, a 5 16 drill bit will knock any burrs off or whatever it might be. Um, even just the plating, it's such a tight fit that um, different coatings or the thickness of this plating on here can, can make it inconsistent. But either way, check that now, it's much easier to do it prior to getting under the dash, going to hook this thing up. So that'll make your life a lot easier during this install. All right, so now we're gonna mount this using the factory nuts that you removed, taking the stock one off. If you wanna get a real overkill, you can put some two-sided tape. There's got a little thin strip of it around here if you're worried about it, but it seals up pretty good since it's flat here. Um, so we're gonna mount this thing up, get the factory hardware started. Kind of get them hand tight. It kind of centers itself out on those studs. Just tighten it down. All right, so we got the pedal bracket lined up with the clevis here so you're going to take your pin and you can push down the clutch pedal a little bit to get to line up and it slides through like that so now your pin is installed that's what the pin looks like in next thing we're going to do is the cotter pin And that's all locked in. All right, so the master center is mounted to the firewall. It's hooked to the pedal. Um, you're gonna also have a couple other bags of stuff like this reservoir. Um, so we can get that stuff installed. Reservoir is pretty basic. Actually, Siki has a bracket in here that will allow you to bolt this right to this master cylinder bolt. So. Pretty neat little stainless steel bracket that's bent and designed to go on this piece of hardware right here. So you take this brake booster bolt off and that bracket goes down there. But before you do that, it's easier to bolt the bracket which holds the master cylinder to this. So we'll go through that right now. This bracket, we're going to attach it to the provided stainless bracket. Pretty simple install. Put the nuts on this side. Simple as that. And you can take this bolt off, or this nut I should say. Take that nut off, put it back on. And just, now we're gonna tighten this up, keeping this reservoir mount 
flat. And simple as that. Then you're gonna take the reservoir and the provided clamp. So light pressure and twist, there's no ring on the lower part. So we're gonna push that down into position and then tighten the hose clamp. Now we can hook in the reservoir line, which runs down to this top port of the master cylinder. So you're gonna put your clamp on, make sure you do it in a direction that's gonna be accessible. And then you route this over underneath to the port on the bottom. Same thing, tighten the clamps up. All right, we're good to go on that. The next step on the Clutch Master install is to hook up the lines and the fittings to the slave cylinder and the transmission. Um, so we're gonna move to that and get that knocked out. You wanna do this part of the install before you get this transmission bolted to the engine because you need to be able to access the slave cylinder which is mounted inside the bell housing, so you can't really get to it. These sticky lines fully replace the lines all the way from the slave cylinder. So you're actually gonna knock the roll pin out that's holding this factory fitting in, and you're gonna install the sticky fitting here, and same goes for here. This is just a thread out fitting, so you're gonna thread in the sticky fitting, and pretty self-explanatory from there. You can't put these on the wrong spot. As long as you fully remove the factory lines, you'll be good. We've had people try to install these fittings in part of the factory line. Obviously it wasn't designed to do that and it doesn't work that good. Um, the cool thing is this fitting gets the drain outside the transmission. It comes with this bracket that bolts to an existing bolt hole right here next to the housing, keeps everything tidy and out of the way. And also the speed bleeder bleeds the fluid outside the bell housing. So it makes it nice, clean, and you don't have to worry about getting any fluid on your clutch and important stuff like that. So we're gonna dive into getting these fittings installed next. All right. So you're gonna take the fitting, the pin fitting, comes with a little O-ring on it. Um, this fitting goes inside the housing here, slides in, give it a little bit of a twist on the way in. You don't want that O-ring to roll over. You can put a little bit of oil on it, kind of wet it but it slides right in there, O-ring's clear, and it leaves a hole you can see all the way through. So then you're gonna take the roll pin that you popped out of there, and we're gonna send that back in here. You're just gonna knock it down in until it's flush. And then we're gonna seat it. Simple as that. So the roll pin's all the way down in there. This fitting will no longer come out. Um, the O-ring is sealed in there, so this is ready for attaching our line. Before we do that though, I'm going to move on to this other fitting that's provided in the Sticky Kit. Um, again, these fittings, if you're running, say this kit's on a TR6060, these fittings will be a little bit different, so just keep that in mind. But it all has to do with the slave cylinder you're attaching it to. Um, just like if you bought the CD009 kit, this is real simple, you're just going to hook to the external slave and it's a single banjo, but uh, these T56 slave cylinders are a little different. So make sure you got your washer in there. 
we're gonna thread this fitting on and you just snug that guy up once you get it on there. All right, we got a finger tight. Throw a wrench on here real quick and just get it snug. Quarter turn, all to do it. All right, so we're gonna get our slave mounted. You wanna get these two fittings gonna be lined up with these two ports on the side. So there's a couple different ways you can bolt it on, but it only works one way and that's why you're gonna line that up. So take the factory hardware. Get this tight. All right, so now that we got the slave cylinder installed in the transmission and both the sicky fittings are installed in the slave cylinder and tightened down, we're gonna move on to installing this clutch bleeder line. So it's a simple AN fitting on this side. We're gonna screw it on to the fitting on the slave and then use this mounting bracket to locate it and attach it to the side of the transmission, locating this bleeder in a nice convenient location, easy to bleed outside of the bell housing. All right, so first step on this, we're gonna get the bleeder line hooked up. So dash four, nothing out of the ordinary here. We're just gonna get it started, bring it in about hand tight, and then usually about a quarter turn with a wrench, we'll get it, get it where it needs to be. Get it snug. And we're gonna move on to mounting it. So these clutch lines come with this mounting bracket on, it's designed to go on the tab. It's, you can see there's a curve which directly matches the underside of this. So we're gonna put that under there, run a bolt through it and tighten that up and that'll locate this clutch bleeder line down where it needs to be. Now this bracket can vary a little bit depending on which model clutch master cylinder you got. Uh, this is a T56 so if that's what you have this is exactly what it's gonna look like and how it'll apply but pretty easy. You just wanna mount it on the bottom side and as you can see it locates this clutch so once you get it on here then this clutch line you can orient it however you want depending on which chassis you're doing this in you might need to manipulate this and move it around you can actually use this bracket elsewhere if you wanted to say mount it on one of the bell housing bolt holes you would just have to drill out this hole to be a little bit larger but it was intended to go here but it doesn't really matter it could be used more universally however you want to use it And now we can tighten up the tab holding the line to this bracket. All right, lastly, we're gonna install the feed line which runs up to the master clutch master cylinder. So we're gonna thread this fitting on to dash three. Now you're gonna need to, since this fitting spins in here, you try to turn that without holding that other fitting, it's just gonna spin on you. So you're gonna wanna hold that when you get this tight. Get it snug and go about an eighth a quarter. And you're good to go. So this actually pivots around. Um, now you got this on, you can put your bell housing on and you're ready to get the transmission up in the car. I would just secure these lines out of the way so they don't get damaged on the way in. And then once it's in the car, you're gonna hook this line up to the master cylinder. All right, so at this point in the FRS swap, this transmission is not ready to go into the car. We're not to that stage yet, so we're gonna leave this alone. And then once the engine transmission's in the car, we'll hook up this clutch line to the master cylinder. All right, so now would be a great time to get the bell housing on our Magnum transmission. So we're gonna get that bolted up now, that way it's ready to go to line the dowel pins.
Time to get all these started and snugged up before you torque any of them down. And last step, you're going to, want to torque these bolts to factory specification. But that's it for the trans, so um, we're good to go till we're ready to bolt this up to the motor and drop it in the car. All right, so that's going to do it for this episode of our FRS build. Um, we're going to get back at it here shortly. Uh, next step's going to be probably bringing the Camaro in and tearing that out. We've got a few more things to do on the FRS, but I want to get that motor ready and pulled out of the car and prepped and a lot of stuff to do to that. So. Uh, no shortage of things to get done, but we're going to keep cranking on it. So make sure you guys hit the bell so you don't miss the next episode. And don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.